Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Retro Game to Come video, we're going to be discussing news of the technology variety, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We'll be starting things out with Vega, specifically some confusion again on pricing. As a retailer in the UK has told us that prices for RX Vega 64 in particular may end up being at least £100 more than what they currently are. We'll get to that in a second. Then we'll move over to Team Green and NVIDIA because Volta is not coming anytime soon. This is according to NVIDIA themselves. And then we'll finalize the video with Ice Lake from Intel. So this has not been confirmed by AMD in person. I'm sure that by the time you know tomorrow rolls around, we'll probably know more about this. But I'm just letting you know in case you are on the fence of whether to buy uh, Vega. So don't say I didn't warn you. So Gibbo, who is one of the staff members on Overclockers UK, they're pretty, um, pretty well known in the United Kingdom, um, essentially has said Vega is finally here, it's in stock along with some epic bundles and free sync deals. So obviously there's a plethora of different deals and um, you know rebates and all that stuff that you can expect, but here's the important thing. Um, now all the good and bad news, I'm quoting him. The good news is AMD are rebating early launch sales to allow us to hit 449.99, that's great British pounds, on standalone black cards, which have no games. So just a quick refresher, these are the black RX Vega 64s, which have no performance difference. The silver and black obviously just looks nicer and has um, you know, that kind of nice aesthetic to it. So it's up to you if you want to pay that. Uh, going back into the quote, this is a launch only price which AMD are at present saying will be withdrawn in the near future. When and if this happens is unknown. But remember, do not be shocked if the price jumps up nearly 100 great British pounds in a few days. And he continues by saying this time round there's no early adopter tax. Quite the opposite on the standalone Black Edition cards, so be quick. We've also made some bundles as well. These bundles feature no discount. What you get is two AAA titles known as Prey in the yet-to-be-launched uh, Wolfenstein 2, uh, 2 and uh, which is worth a solid £50 between them, and um, basically continues, which you can read it on screen anyway. It looks like... So I've actually had a number of messages on Facebook and email on this very subject, so people are definitely very upset about this, and that's being quite light on the term. Uh, one person, Joe, messaged me the original link, and then I've had a couple of other people message me on Facebook. They do not wish to be named. One, because they said that he has close ties in the community. I'm going to give you the too long, didn't read about this. Uh, OC UK sold 1,000 launch cards. They were, once again, priced at 450 Great British Pounds. Those cards sold out in less than 30 minutes. Now, AMD are telling retailers in the UK and Europe that they can only sell packs. This is at AMD's request. This is not down to the desire of the actual retailers. Overclockers UK, apparently, uh, Gibbo, had actually phoned AMD and had tried to get them to change their decision, but apparently, they're his words, they won't change their minds. And right now, this means that if you want to buy a card... The 499 US dollar price is basically done if you are living in Europe. Um, so that basically means you have to buy 550 because it's packs now. You have to buy the pack. There's a couple of things. Of course, you get those couple of games, which, you know, we've mentioned. But let's say you don't want those games, then you're essentially wasting 100 uh, Great British Pounds. And let's just say you do want the games. Let's say you did want the games. You're still paying more money because let's say you can get those games like 29 99 You could get them usually from Green Man Gaming. Let's say you've gone Green Man Gaming, 29 99 25 99 whatever. Okay, let's say that that's 50 to 60 Great British Pounds. You're still paying between 40 and 50 Great British Pounds more for the RX Vega uh, 64 than what you would if you were simply buying them with the card solo and then buying the guard, the game separately. This is really a strange decision. Apparently, AMD are, uh, are saying that this is due to mining. They don't want miners to buy the cards. But I feel that's a really weak argument because that's essentially saying, well, okay, we're just going to increase the price of the cards and have all of these games that then, you know, that will stop miners, right? Well, not really, because a couple of things. First of all, 
as a miner, you might just take that cost because you could just sell the cards on, uh, sorry, sell the games on eBay. Secondly, they could have just limited it to one per customer. Arguably, though, one per customer, you could have gotten your cousin to, I suppose, uh, make a purchase on your behalf. There is that. But it, it, it's just really messy at the moment. And obviously, the biggest issue I've got with this is that, well, reviewers have essentially reviewed this card with a certain price in mind. Like, if you review a product, you're doing it not just for the performance. Okay, it's getting 65 frames a second on this test, and the GTX 1080 is getting 67 frames a second. But hey, this card is $20 or $30 cheaper. We recommend it for value or whatever. You know, you get the idea. Well, if suddenly the cards, the cheapest way to buy into that ecosystem is like $100 more, then I'm not saying that a review in terms of performance is null and void, but now it means that if you're living in certain regions, possibly even the States, we don't know how far this is going to extend, you're screwed. Because now, you, you know, you've got to amend your, your, your review. Written reviews, it's a bit easier. Video reviews, it's a complete bitch, because the best thing you can do is add an annotation or something. And even then, it can make a difference in recommendation. I really want to see how AMD respond to this. I'm not going to criticise them. I'm not going to say it's a good or a bad thing. I want to know, A, whether it's true, whether it's going to extend to all regions, whether it's going to extend to the RX Vega 56s. Because if so, that would kind of be weird. Because let's say let's say if it didn't extend to the 56, that would mean that there's a massive gulf in pricing, essentially for the entry-level model. So what that means... The, considering the performance difference between the 56 and the 64, it, it, it's just a bit bizarre, and this whole thing is a bit weird. I feel that the Vega launch has not been handled well. Um, I feel that once again they should have waited. They should have gotten the drivers a bit, a bit more, um, a bit smoother. I, I but I, maybe the whole launch should have just been postponed, and the 56 and the 64 should have launched simultaneously. I think that might have been better. But hey, let's just wait on that one, shall we? Company CEO, NVIDIA company CEO, Jensen Huang, has decided to tell us that, that Volta may happen in the gaming scene, but certainly not this year. He said, Volta for gaming, we've not announced anything. All I can say is that our pipeline is filled with exciting new toys for gamers, and we have some really exciting new technology for offer on the pipeline, but for the holiday season, for the foreseeable future, I think Pascal is just unbeatable. It's just the best there is. Anyone who's looking forward to playing Call of Duty or Destiny 2, if you don't have one, should run out and just get themselves Pascal. So there are a couple of reasons. One that he stated out loud, and the other one he didn't, but we can probably read between the lines. We'll get for the official reason first. He said these things are just expensive to go and design. He estimates that the cost to manufacture them alone, this is not including profit, so essentially just the cost to produce them, is 700 to 1000 US dollars, which is quite extraordinary. So, in short, he's saying it's just not cost-effective, because that means, at best, you're going to be looking at one of the hiring cards at like a 1000 The market just can't tolerate that. It, it just can't. You know, okay, a $500, people complain, but, you know, most of the time, as long as it's a nice jump, they'll... they'll they'll purchase the card you can't suggest you know a thousand bucks for like a basic um volta card and obviously when i say basic it's obviously going to outperform the 1080 or what have you but still people won't really be willing to accept that and you've got to remember once again this is just the manufacturing cost this is does not include you know profit and retailers and whatever else and obviously tax vat whatever you need to add to that so it's obviously going to be rather expensive the second thing is that Basically, NVIDIA just don't feel threatened. Um, I don't really want to wade into the whole, is Vega great or is it bad? That's down to your interpretation. And honestly, I think a lot of it is going to be down to drivers. I feel that Vega has a lot of room to improve over drivers. I think it was about 15 to 20% of an improvement for the Polaris series, more specifically the 480. And we saw how, at the beginning... The 480 was way behind the 10, uh, sorry, the 1060 in certain tests. Not all tests, but in certain tests, the 480 just wasn't holding up to the standards you'd expect. But driver revisions that certainly improve that. And it seems like Vega has some issues. Like I discussed just yesterday's video, how certain features like HBCC is not fully enabled yet. Um, and it, it's just 
it's just a bit weird how the drivers are at the moment. So even if you take that out of the equation, AMD are just not putting enough pressure yet on NVIDIA on the high-end market. Second thing, even if, let's say for the sake of argument, it was a little bit faster, let's say three months go by and Vega um, drivers improve, and let's say it goes to 10-15% better performance, so on average it's beating the 1080 rather than being just a hair behind or just about as fast. Okay. At that point, NVIDIA then have a couple of other options. The first is they can just do a price cut. It's going to be very hard for people to resist a GTX 1080 with, like, let's say, a 50 or a 70 or $100 uh, price cut. Because, ultimately, that's very compelling. And I don't know if AMD could do that simply because of the price of HBM2 and all the other bits. And Plus, they've only just released the card. The second thing is that I wouldn't be surprised, given what um, Jensen told us about this, if we see the Pascal refresh, it's been touted for some time. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes to fruition, simply because at this point, I, I don't think six months is going to be enough, just for sake of argument, to cut the price. So it's possible we might not see Volta until, let's say, summer, maybe even a bit later than that. I, I guess it really depends. It's possible that we won't see it with HBM. Maybe with GDDR6 or maybe uh, just GDDR5X with a slightly wider bus width, but obviously it's going to depend because if they were to do that, then you're going to need a fairly wide bus or very fast memory to be able to put out the bandwidth, presumably for Volta. Obviously, I'm making some presumptions because we don't know how much more efficient Volta is than Pascal in memory when it comes to gaming. So there are some assumptions in my mind there, so that's definitely something to take into consideration. But there is one thing we definitely have to be thankful for when it comes to AMD, and that is the pressure they've put on Intel. And I'm very happy about this. I, I, one of the reasons I'm wishing them just the, all the success in the world when it comes to Vega, but Intel have, have been under a lot of pressure, and they've done something rather unprecedented. And that is, Intel have actually put live a, a web page. Admittedly, it's super duper simple, but it is still a web page, which reveals a couple of key snippets of information on Ice Lake. The Ice Lake processor family is its successor to the 8th generation Intel Core processor family. These processors utilize Intel's industry leading 10nm process technology. So there's a couple of things which immediately throw spanners into some works of our understanding of what Intel were doing. The first is that, well, it's on 10nm plus uh, process technology, which obviously is a good indicator that, well, it exists, because they hadn't officially confirmed this previously. They hadn't officially confirmed that they were uh, pursuing this. There were rumours, but rumours do not equate to a confirmation, as we all know. The second is that the company has not even launched a 10nm, which is Canon-like. So there are some questions, right? really, at least in my mind, of what's going on now. What exactly is going to be happening in the timeline? Because we've got Coffee Lake, which, according to all the leaks in the world right now, are, co are going to be happening this year, you know, in the next couple of weeks, basically. We're going to start seeing the processor rolled out, the platform rolled out. So what the hell is going to happen between Cannon Lake and Ice Lake and Coffee Lake? As a bit of a refresher, Obviously, we have KB Lake, which is the uh, third core product, which is using 14NM. Uh, it's the second generation, if you will, 14 Plus, or 14 Plus version of Intel's 14NM process. So, back at uh, CS, I think, they had publicly demonstrated products which were post-KB Lake designs. So since then, Intel have confirmed, of course, the 8th generation. This was done via Facebook and other uh, mediums as well. And this this event is going to be streamed on August 21st. So there are some questions now of what exactly the roadmap is going to be. Another slight aside, and this is coming from someone who is uh, covering the news, slash getting PR releases and all of that stuff. It's very noticeable actually the, the difference in how intel have been vocal about stuff recently they've been a lot more i don't i don't like to use the word boisterous but i, I guess that's the best way of describing it they've been a lot less nonchalant what i mean by that is that previously intel had been a lot a lot quieter when it came to releasing promotional material or technology 
leaflets, that type of stuff where AMD had been the reverse. They were very they were very loud when it came to what they were doing. And obviously this is AMD, you know, trying to say, hey, look at our products. And Intel didn't really need to do that. They didn't really need to work so much with the press because essentially they just had the run of the place. Now it's the reverse and AMD have definitely caught Intel on the back foot, which is obviously a great thing. It's good for the industry. Now, does that mean that I think that Intel are going to remain on the back foot? Probably not. I feel that, you know, the next architecture release, Coffee Lake, is probably going to be extremely popular with gamers. I don't know how, obviously, good it's going to be in terms of performance. We're going to have to wait for the benchmarks for that, or as usual. But I do feel it's going to be a nice process of release. And I, I am still a bit pissed off that it doesn't work on the 200 series. There's only a couple of theories I've got on that. One, they just want money and success. The second one is that technically there was an issue with the board where it physically could not communicate with the additional cores or maybe Intel just weren't confident with the 200 series power distribution to actually power the additional cores on the processor, particularly when it comes to overclocking. That's a theory, but obviously we're going to have to wait and see exactly how all of this works and supposedly it's the same pin layout as in like 1151 but the difference is essentially if you were to put the socket or sorry the processor in i'm guessing a it wouldn't physically fit and b the um while the pin number is identical and the layout looks very similar obviously the pins do slightly different things that's what the rumor is anyway but we'll have to just wait and see whether that is true or not anyway Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.